Okay, so for a number of reasons, this is the first video I've been able to make this week. One of those reasons being, as you can probably tell from my horribly nasal voice today, I'm suffering from a severe case of man flu. Which, by the way, is a concept I really take objection to. Do men seriously complain more about illness? Really? Come on. There are timorous pusillanimous, attention-seeking hypochondriacs of all the sexes. All of them. Remember Jamila Jamil? No, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! All of you silly women in the comments section now. Oh, well, my husband, oh, my son, my father was actually... Well, my co-workers. Calm down, dear. Stop being so subjective. That's called confirmation bias. And right here, you've got some objective evidence. I'm soldiering on. I'm making this video, <clears throat> despite how terrible I feel. Oh, my sinus. The frustrating thing about not making a video is uh, the fact that the content just keeps coming. I see all the days that I don't make a video as a missed opportunity, but there is a real backlog of cringe, pretentious nonsense for me to comment on, so swings and roundabouts, I guess. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to take a look at is this bizarre new show on Netflix that Harry and Meghan are somehow involved in. They're kind of presenting this documentary series about nothing in particular. It's just a mashup, a compilation of clips and old interviews of different people who, I don't know, Netflix or the Mandela Foundation consider to be morally virtuous. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Greta Thunberg, Jacinda Ardern. Oh God, what a sick fest. And I guess Harry and Meghan will just be there like... Jeremy Beadle on You've Been Framed. So let's have a look at love in all its different aspects. Is that what I am? Am I Jeremy Beadle? <laughs> Were they the original reaction videos? Nah, that's not what I am. Anyway, let's take a look at this. Yeah, the. I'm going to comment on and alter significantly your experience of watching the trailer to Harry and Meghan's new... I'm not Jeremy Beadle, okay? Thank you. At every turn in my life, I thought, do I really want this? And if the answer is yes, you find a way. Life, uh, finds a way. This was inspired by Nelson Mandela. You see, what Harry and Meghan are doing, they are carrying on the work of Nelson Mandela. They didn't choose this life. I, I hesitate to say it. But they're almost like prophets, you know, chosen by divine intervention to spread the word of God. They didn't choose this life. The universe demands it of them. Who once said, what counts in life is not the mere fact that we have lived. Oh, Jesus, Greta, take a day off. It is what difference we have made to the lives of others. That's actually uh, a very interesting point that they've just made there, that it is about uh, what you put out into the universe, right? The positivity. How do you make this a better place for everyone else to be? And uh, it's kind of funny because I don't really see how Harry and Meghan tangibly uh, contribute anything positive to the universe, but they would say that they're raising awareness. They seem to me to be what I describe as uh, philanthropic narcissists, uh, these people who develop an outward uh, public persona of a generous, giving, charitable person. But if you spend time with them, which obviously I haven't spent time with them, but if you spend time with them, you start to see that it's all really more about themselves. It's about their ego. And I think it's fairly clear that Harry and Meghan are very self-pitying. They've got a chip on their shoulder. And they do think that the universe and that their families and that the public and that the press all owe them a lot more than what they've been given. They can't see the massive amounts of privilege that they clearly have and how little suffering they've actually had in their lives. They've both been very privileged. Harry, you would think more so than Meghan. But Meghan, I mean, look at Meghan when she's talking about her childhood. She talks about how she had to survive on sizzler salads or whatever. Nonsense. Growing up in a black area. She, she lived with her mum. She didn't. She lived in Hollywood with her dad and went to private schools, right? Harry talking about uh, how, oh, they just gave me a public wedding to get me out of the way. They, 38 million pounds is what they did. <laughs> they paid 38 million pounds for you to get married to uh, a divorcee um, actress. Beside the point, that's just my snobbery creeping in there. But anyway... My point is that 
these people and the people that defend them, I don't understand. Have you never met someone like that who is outwardly this charitable, giving, generous person and that really at the end of the day, all they're doing that for, the only reason they have that persona is to sort of prove to themselves or prove to the universe that they should be held in higher esteem than they are. It, in fact, here's a clip from the other documentary they made, which I think kind of proves what I'm trying to say. I'm probably not articulating it very well, so I'll just let Megan do it for me. We get on the plane, and it's not the pilot, but whoever's sort of overseeing the crew. The crew heard, I believe he's called. And he came, and he knelt next to my seat, and he took his hat off. And I just remember looking at him, he goes, You are. So emblematic of strength that comes from embracing your humanity, even in the face of all these family and home and public pressures. <laughs> Couldn't resist. And he came and he knelt next to my seat and he took his hat off. And I just remember looking at him, he goes, we appreciate everything you did for our country. <laughs> now, don't be cynical. That may well have happened. Just like that South African member of the Lion King production told her that the people of South Africa rejoiced in the streets when she married Harry. Same way as they did when Nelson Mandela was released from prison. And that was in South Africa, which has nothing to do with Meghan Markle. Imagine the mayhem in the streets of Nigeria that day. It was declared a national holiday. Black Friday, they called it. 43% discount on everything. It's a shame we'll never be able to track that guy down because he wasn't a member of the cabin crew or the pilot because he was busy flying the plane or something. It was the kind of guy that organises, I don't know, something the crew heard. And it was the first time that I felt like someone saw the sacrifice. <sighs> we just didn't see the sacrifice. You know, it took this member of the, I mean, it wasn't the pilot or a steward, a, a attendant. He's the guy that organises the, you know, the guy who kind of organises the other members of the cabin crew. <laughs> Fetch the trolley! That guy on the planes. You know that guy, right? It's him. Uh, he dropped to his knees, looked into her eyes and said, thank you. Yeah, thank you for your sacrifice. He understood his inferiority to Megan. He fell to the ground in awe of her light. Um, and we're all on the road to perdition. We're all, we've all heard, you know, we're like Saul on his road to Damascus and we can change. We can see the light like this simple cabin boy. Um, we don't understand the sacrifice. 72 days as a working royal. Do you understand how many ribbons, innumerable ribbons, she had to cut at charity events? She had it made, right? She was a really young, 30-something-year-old Hollywood actress with all life and career ahead of her. She just wanted to be single, damn it. Till Harry came and swept her off her feet on her single girl's holiday because he saw her with the Instagram filter and he's like, who's that? And why wouldn't he be? You know, that was what happened. And why can't we, why can't we see it? Hmm? Why does it take this crew herd thing guy to, you know, we should all be like that. We should all be more humble. We should all bow to Megan. Not for my own country. For this country. It's not mine. Yeah, that's another great point. Megan, she didn't do it for her country. You know, she did it for a country that wasn't hers, right? For the UK, it's not her country. And in a way, I don't want to sound hyperbolic, but... If she didn't do it for her country, she just did it for another country. Wasn't she really just sacrificing? Wasn't that sacrifice for all humans? You know, a bit like for the greater good, for the greater good of mankind. Did she sacrifice herself the same way that JC did? 
Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of man's sins. Megan cut a shit ton of ribbons. I mean, I'm not saying she is the Messiah or whatever. I'm just saying, you know, she's... There are parallels that can be drawn, okay? We landed in Canada and one of our security guards who had been with H for so long, these guys were so wonderful. I just collapsed in his arms crying. I was like, I tried so hard. He goes, I know you did. I know you did, ma'am. You are the greatest hero in American history. I'm like, I know you did. Like, I tried so hard. And that's a piece that's so triggering because you go, and it still wasn't good enough. And you still don't fit in. That's amazing because it's, you know, you think about the uh, final scene of Schindler's List and Oscar Schindler breaks down in tears because, you know, even Oscar Schindler thought he could have done more. You know, he could have saved more people. But Megan couldn't. She could not have tried any harder. It was completely out of her control. And, uh, you know, she sacrificed everything she possibly could to make the world a better place. And it still wasn't good enough. You know, so in many ways... It's not for me to say, is she better than Oscar Schindler? She certainly tried harder. Are we, the British public, worse than the Nazis? Anyway, back to the trailer. Oh, South Africans rejoicing in the streets. Now, I know a number of South Africans watch this channel, so um, can you confirm, is that footage of South Africans celebrating Nelson Mandela's release from prison? Is it from the day that uh, Harry and Meghan got married? Are we all living in parallel universes, in distinct realities from one another? Are you one of those South Africans that suffers from the Mandela effect? Do you have vivid memories of news coverage of Mandela's death in the mid-80s? When in this universe, he died in 2013. Are Harry and Meghan living in a parallel universe? The eyes of all future generations are upon you. I wonder what Greta Thunberg gets up to in her spare time. She's got any dark secrets. Badger baiting, fly tipping, setting fire to stuff. I bet there's a whole load of weird shit in her basement. And if you choose to fail us, we will never forgive you. Ooh, ominous. As leaders, we have the keys to create a sense of security and a sense of hope. <laughs> Speaking of Oscar Schindler, <laughs> where was New Zealand's Oscar Schindler, eh? To help them break out of their... Not concentration camps, but... COVID control hotels. It was like a holiday. But, um... I do wonder where their sense of hope was. What sense of hope did the New Zealanders have in their hotels, eh? As their lives and livelihoods were being destroyed. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but what are you going to do? Where was their sense of hope? It's about people who have made brave choices. To fight for change and to become leaders and giving inspiration to the rest of us to live, to lead. Well, that looks riveting. I can't wait to watch it. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, comment, all that kind of thing. Let's uh, get this ball rolling again. Now I'm back to semi-fitness. Uh, I'm going to be making more videos on everything, not just Harry and Meghan. So I've got, I've got other things in the pipeline, you know. I'm uh, I'm working on other stuff, so yeah, that'll be out soon, hopefully. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.